Hello folks and welcome uh, to our next um, update video here on our Lexus Hybrid Gearbox Drive uh, project. So when we last looked at it uh, we had achieved torque control but we had a pretty major problem happening um, when the motor would stop. Basically um, when we get the motor turning and it would find the north marker um, it would be able to calculate the angle uh, of the rotor correctly um, but whenever the motor stopped uh, we were just in a world of pain and indeed some tests with higher voltages uh, proved to be unsuccessful so we made some modifications and I'm pleased to say uh, we now have a good 95% of those problems gone. So we can now um, run the motor uh, both from a complete standstill and uh, backwards also um, in, su in such a way that the microprocessor in the inverter can now keep track accurately of the rotor position. Now, in most inverter systems, uh, we use two uh, encoder, si encoder signals. And one reason for that is that by the phase of the uh, signals, we can tell whether the motor is running uh, forwards or backwards. So, <clears throat> In the design that Johannes did for the induction motor, um, he uses one encoder, ch encoder channel, uh, and that is purely to determine rotor RPM. Uh, there is, or there was, no way in the uh, existing design, from a hardware and software perspective, to incorporate to encoder ch encoder channels now for the induction motor that's not a big deal because we don't need to know the position of the rotor but for the internal permanent magnet motor uh, that's kind of a big deal and what we found was actually happening uh, through some experimentation would be that when we would spin and come to a complete stop um, because of the very powerful magnets in the rotor, the motor would kick back a little bit. Now, it might only be a few degrees, but what would then happen is that the uh, resolver to digital converter board would continue to send out pulses the software in the inverter would see those pulses as being further forwards rotation of the motor which would compound the problem. So when we tried to start up again from a complete standstill, the position of the rotor versus where the software thought it would be were completely different and so it would jump about and uh, just generally not run properly until we hit the north marker again and we basically start uh, spinning start spinning properly so uh, what we have done is the analog devices 82s 1210 resolver to digital converter chip has a DIR pin, which is a direction pin. That pin goes high uh, when the angle is incre increasing and low when the angle of the rotor is decreasing. At least I hope I have got that the right way around. Um, so in this case, we then have a simple high-low signal that tells the microprocessor in the inverter uh, which way that the rotor is turning. Um, so in the case of uh, this now I can actually grab 
the basically the motor here and spin it all over the, the place then get my throttle and I run away perfectly I can come to a complete stop I can stop suddenly I can you know physically turn the motor backwards and we pick it up So this has been a pretty major step for us here. So why don't we take a close look at uh, what actually happens here uh, with the various signals. Alright so as you can see here it's a little bit of a rat's nest of wiring. Um, but this green wire here uh, is basically connected from the uh, resolver to encoder board uh, through a potential divider uh, because it's a 5 volt signal and we're feeding into uh, a 3.3 volt microprocessor uh, and that signal there uh, basically gives us information uh, about what direction uh, that the rotor in our motor is turning. As we can see, as I rotate the motor backwards and forwards here, we get positive or a, a high or a low signal. When I press my throttle, do we basically run, stop, run, stop, and stop. And as we can see, it's when we come to a stop that we get a direction change from our rotor. Alright folks, so now you can see that we now have the ability to track the rotor location um, during normal running and compensate for you know whatever direction changes that may occur. Our one last thing uh, that we need to solve is the basic cold start. So I'm going to demonstrate that. And by a cold start, uh, what I mean is that we shut the inverter logic off. So we're basically, this would be a situation where we would kind of get into the car and start the car up. So we're going to go logic on, contactor on, start signal on. Now, right now, the Inverter does not know where the rotor is. It's going to have to find the north marker and that's going to be a little bit tricky for us. So when I press the throttle, we're going to see this kind of jerk about a bit until it finds the north marker, then we'll be back to normal. Now it's found it and we're away. Now we're just back to normal, controllable upper operation, and I can do all my, you know, tricks trying to fool it, and it's 100% fine. And there is something else that I want to try, which I haven't done. Uh, I'm not even sure if the software will so so support this. So again, complete cold start, uh, inverter off and on, we go contactor and we'll start up. Rather than press the throttle I'm going to rotate the motor. And we're off. Interesting. So I was able to manually find the north marker there. Mm. 
again, my trusty analog meter is kind of showing me the, the uh, direction changes. Okay, folks, you're probably all bored mad buying, buying that by now, so I better sign off. Uh, thanks very much for watching and stay with us uh, for some more uh, Lexus hybrid gearbox action. And um, yeah, so we'll be back soon.